with the Lord that ain't clapping your hands. If you want victory, with the Lord that ain't Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. I want to go to the word of the Lord this evening, carrying on with it, our lesson, uh, our series uh, that we've been teaching the last few weeks, Life Inside the Gates, uh, amen, Gates and Fences. I want to make a, a mention again uh, at the outset of this uh, to let you know, I'm going to read the scripture in just a moment, uh, the majority of the material that I'm using comes from get this book by, right here by Lori Wagner, uh, Gates and Fences, Straight Talk in a Crooked World. Uh, so, like I said, my studies for this series comes directly, the majority of the stuff come right out of this book right here. And the Lord has been working, laying on my heart for some time. I've had this book for a few years now, uh, but just laid on my heart here recently uh, as I've been studying through this. Amen. And we do need to have some fences built in our life. Amen. Gates, amen, to keep things in and keep things out. Uh, last week uh, uh, we spoke, uh, lesson number three last week was Good Neighbors, the Fence of Godly Companionship. If you were here last week and you enjoyed that, can you say amen? Amen. amen. So tonight we're going to go to uh, lesson number four. Uh, and this fence that we're going to speak about tonight is the fence of modesty. Everyone say the fence of modesty. The fence, fence of modesty. Amen. So we're going to go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. And as I mentioned, uh, even last week as I, I was teaching, I said, uh, when, this, when I teach a lesson uh, on anything or preach a message on anything, you need to get the fact that this lesson or this message is for you. Amen. It's not for the person next to you. And as you're, being, uh, as you're sitting there and observing and listening, don't be thinking, well, oh, this lesson is for so-and-so. Because if you do, you're missing the fact. And when you walk out, you don't need to tell somebody else, oh, you know, the preacher was talking to you tonight. Because if you do, you've missed the whole crux of the message. This message is for you. Everybody say, it's for me. It's for me. So we're going to talk about the fence of modesty. And it's something that is very, very, I believe, uh, in this day and time, is something we need to address uh, as godly men and women. And everyone say, Amen. 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 1 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 8 says, In every place of worship, I want men. And this is Paul writing here. Remember, he was the uh, overseer of these churches. He was the elder. And as you study Paul's writings, you'll see there are some times where he says, you know, this isn't the Lord saying this. This is me saying it. As your overseer, you know, as your God-given leader, I'm putting this out there, you know. Uh, so, so please uh, uh, adhere to it. And Paul didn't say please. Uh, uh, he just put it out there. Uh, and he said you just need to live it. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 8 says, In every place of worship, I want men to pray with holy hands, lifted up to God, free from anger and controversy. And I'm reading uh, from the uh, NIV or the NLV tonight, so it may be just a little bit different than what you're seeing on the screen. This is what you're seeing on the screen is King James Version. And verse 9 says, And I want women to be modest in their appearance. And everyone say amen. Amen. And what you have to understand in the day and time that Paul was living, living in, uh, modesty wasn't that big of a problem with men. But in this world that we're living in now, uh, men and women have a problem with modesty. Yes. It used to be way back then that men were the only ones that were sensually aroused by looking. But in this day and time that we're living in, women have more of a problem, as just as much of a problem, if not more of a problem, than what, than what men have. If you don't believe that, you need to pay attention uh, to what is being watched and what is being listened to. Uh, what is being played across the uh, television sets and across radios uh, uh, and across the media. So I would add, I want men and women to be modest in their appearance. Everyone say amen. Amen. 
Amen. You got that, Brother Chopper? Yeah. Be modest in your dress. <laughs> uh, they should wear decent and appropriate clothing and not draw attention to themselves by the way they fix their hair or by wearing gold or pearls or expensive clothes. For women who claim to be devoted to God should make themselves attractive by the good things they do. And everyone say amen. 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 And so I add to that men and women. Everyone say, help me, Lord, help me, Lord. to not only hear this message, hear this message but, to it, but to live it in Jesus' name. Jesus name. God bless you as you're seated. Amen. Dressing sensually is taking a step away from purity and towards fulfilling provocative desires that steer us in the wrong direction. Modest is a separation from worldliness and will in fact deter immorality in our lives. The way that we dress and the way that we look can either draw us closer to God or draw us further away from God. It can either draw attention to God or it can draw attention to ourselves which does not need to happen and I want every young person and older person alike to please hear this message that I'm talking about tonight. Because modesty is of utmost importance, ladies and men. The way you dress and the way that you want people to look at you, amen, is very, very important. You can tell when someone has a spirit that is not close to God. Just by the way that they carry themselves. Just by the way they act towards others of the opposite sex. And even nowadays, others of the same sex. Amen. When I'm talking about sensuality. You can tell that spirit that someone is carrying. Romans 12 and 1 says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because all of all He has done for you. Who does your body belong to? God. God. It belongs to God. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind He will find acceptable. If you are not dressing modest, amen, if you are dressing to attract someone else's attention by the way you are dressed and it's in a sensual sense, Amen. Then you are not going to be accepted of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. So we must be very, very uh, sensitive to this. Uh, this is truly the way to worship Him, uh, is what the Scripture says. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think, and then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. I, I want to please God. Can someone and say amen. 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 And ladies and men alike, we should want to please God. Romans 1 and 22 says, and the scripture that I read says we need to let go. We don't need to copy the behavior and customs of the world. We don't need to copy the styles of the world. If the way that we're dressed, I'm telling you now, the world is dressing in a way that is to catch your eye and cause you to want something that isn't yours. What you've got, I want you to know, is not yours to give away anyhow. Amen. Ladies and men, it belongs to the person that you marry. Amen. Amen. And until you have made that commitment in marriage, it doesn't belong to anybody else. Amen. So you should be advertising what you've got. And if you are married, you know, don't need to be putting your stuff out there for somebody to pass by in a window shop and look at it. Because it belongs to the person that you're married to and nobody else. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Uh, Romans 1 and 22 says, professing to be wise. And remember, we're talking about a fence of modesty here. They became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged 
exchange the truth of God for the lie and worship and serve the creature, uh, the, the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Uh, amen. Uh, our bodies, uh, we do not want to dishonor God with our bodies. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. Uh, for even their women exchange the natural use uh, for what is against nature. In other words, what Paul is saying here is the women uh, gave up what was natural, which is a woman and a man. Uh, they gave that up for a woman and a woman. And we're experiencing that in this world that we're living in today. And then it says, Likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust for one another. Men with men committing what is shameful. The scripture says that homosexuality and lesbianism is shameful. But this world that we're living in is saying that everything is acceptable. I want you to know it is not acceptable. It is contrary to the Word of God. Amen. And receiving in themselves the penalty of the error which was due. In other words, they were going to have to pay the price for the sins that they have committed. You see, we don't hear a lot about modesty in the world that we're living in today. You know, children go to school now. I, I do thank God uh, uh, for a lot of the school systems uh, uh, that we have because they have a dress code uh, that would make some churches uh, embarrassed. I mean, because their dress code, uh, I, I'm telling you, if they come to school inappropriate, showing off any flesh, uh, uh, if it's sheer or see-through or too tight, uh, they're going to have to go home. Today's acceptable styles of dress passed the threshold of decency a long time ago. And we see it all the time. I want us to know if we're going to please God, we need to be dressed modest. Amen. We don't need to be trying to attract somebody's attention by what we're wearing. And everyone say amen. 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 We want to make sure that we're as close to God. Someone will say, well, you're an old fuddy-duddy. I want you to know I'm not an old stick in the mud. Because I know, amen, what can get somebody's attention and what can lead them down the wrong path. That's right. And some folks will say, well, they shouldn't be looking anyhow. Well, you shouldn't be advertised. Amen. Listen, the Word of God has not changed on the issue of modesty. I know 50 years ago uh, we didn't have as much of a problem with this as we do now. But I know we're living in a day and time where it is accepted. You can look at the magazines. You can look at the musicians and the way that they're dressed. You can watch uh, uh, MTV, VH1. You can, look at, 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 uh, you can look at the Disney Channel and see things and see how people Young kids are dressed and dressed inappropriately. Amen. Right. You see, it's become accepted. Amen. And that fence of modesty has been torn down by the world that we're living in. I'm saying to the church, we need to build it up today. God, through His Word, established a fence of modesty. I mean, a fence of protection around us. And I want to say today, as I've seen printed in other places, that modest is hottest. Some folks will say, oh, well, oh, she's hot. Well, I want you to know, she isn't hot. Man. Hey, if she's modest, that is the hottest. And then I don't want some hot hoochie mama out there. I want a woman that is covered, a woman that is not advertising, and women you should want the same. You don't want a man that's walking around saying, oh, look at all these women, look at me, and lust after me. Yes. Oh, right. Hallelujah. Modest is hottest. Everybody say, modest is hottest. Modest. Amen. After Adam and Eve sinned, their eyes were open to their nakedness. And once they realized this, the Scripture tells us that they made themselves aprons out of leaves. So get this picture in your mind of an apron. Everybody know what an apron is? Either it's the kind that goes around your waist or you got the big kind of apron. 
So they made these aprons, but they still knew uh, that, that they were not dressed appropriately. Uh, you know, an apron uh, still leaves a lot exposed. Do you understand what I'm saying here tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So uh, uh, when God came looking for them and He found them, uh, and they were still inappropriately dressed because they were not completely covered, God went out and made a sacrifice. He sacrificed an animal. Blood was shed for their sins. And He said, those aprons don't cover enough, so I'm going to make is something else. He made them clothes out of these animals. And the Scripture says uh, that these clothes that it, they made, it's translated to mean a tunic or a robe. Uh, they were skins of the sacrifice offered for their sins. And these clothes that God made covered more than just their private parts. You see, that's all that they had covered. Right. You say, well, if I've just got the basics covered, then I'm alright. God said, no. You need to cover a little bit more than that. Because you don't need to leave room for imagination. Because you know how our human mind is and the flesh is. Because if I see just a little bit, you know, all of a sudden, well, that might make me think, well, hey. A little bit more. Yeah, you're sitting there. That's why it needs to be covered. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, and so God, uh, he, he made them something more that covered more. And we know there are obviously a lot of different styles, but if the clothes that we choose are more apron-like than robe or tunic-like in the way they cover our bodies, perhaps we should reevaluate our wardrobes. Amen. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. You need to make sure your stuff is covered. Right. Now, and, and I'm not just talking about when you come to church. Yes, it does need to be covered when you come to church. Now, I'm not talking about sinners or guests. I'm talking about people who are wanting to live a holy and a separated life. Right. Amen. Amen. So if you come in here looking like Sister Christian or, 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 or Brother on Fire, then when you go out there, you need to be dressed the same. Amen. Amen. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't be holy Hannah here and then go out there and be hoochie coochie. <laughs> Someone say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So what is the motive behind what we're wearing? When we put something on, what's the motive behind what we're wearing? And I'm talking to young people and old people alike. Because right. we're, we're living in a, in a world now where old people, uh, older people uh, are able to take uh, uh, medication. And they can still just be as young. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and be as lively as they ever were. You know, there was a day and a time where you got too old to, to worry about that stuff. Right. But now thanks to modern medication, you can just be as young as you think you want. Be. Yeah. And that's getting a whole lot of people in trouble. Yeah. Right. A whole lot of good elderly people would have never fallen into sin. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, I better keep on keeping on. Hallelujah. Is, is it our goal to please God or to feed our own base desires uh, like the lust of the flesh or the pride of life? Is the principle of modesty in our hearts when we dress, uh, we need to make sure that we are dressing modestly. Amen. That we're not attracting things uh, that should not be attracted. 2 Corinthians uh, 6 and 17 says, Therefore, come out from among them and be separate. That means you can't. You don't need to be looking like the world. Right. I know what Rihanna looks like. Right. I know what the rest of these people look like. Right. I'm not an idiot. You don't need to be looking like them. Amen. 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 I, I know uh, uh, what some of these uh, handsome uh, men look like. Uh, and I'm not saying we shouldn't be attractive. Right. Uh, I, I'm not saying we shouldn't want to look good and look nice. Uh, but we shouldn't be getting dressed uh, to get somebody's uh, heart to flitter flatter. Right. Amen. That's right. We shouldn't be dressed and thinking, man, I, I, I know there are going to have to be some people repenting after they look at me. Right? <laughs> but that's sometimes, that's a, what happens, uh, uh, the way that we dress or the way that others dress. Uh, they may come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean. 
And I will receive you. When we come in contact with others, uh, we communicate with them through many methods. Uh, we know about communicating with our eyes, our ears, and our mouth, uh, but we also send and receive messages uh, with other body parts, uh, whether they're openly exposed or not. Amen. If you're advertising something, you're communicating something. Right. You say, well, I didn't mean to. That's why you need to be careful. You need to check yourself out before you walk out the door. Amen. Well, why did he look at me like that? Or well, why was that guy, or, or, or why was he, or why was she flirting with me like that? Well, how have you presented yourself? Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Uh, so, so we're advertising or we're communicating. Uh, you, I know we've all heard uh, the term body language, uh, but have you ever considered uh, dressing language? Amen. When you dress and leave yourself uh, exposed, right. men and ladies alike, tight-fitting shirts, low-cut shirts, tight-fitting pants that show every groove in your body, Right. You are expressing or communicating something that you should not. Amen. Men, if you're wearing skinny jeans, they don't need to be too skinny. Amen. Because we should not be able to look at you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. Somebody say amen. Amen. Ladies, the, everything needs to be covered. Amen. Somebody say amen. I, I told you in the beginning we were going to be covering some topics that some people say, oh, well, you don't need to be hit. Oh, yes, we do. We need to be building some in our hearts and in our lives. Amen. Uh, uh, there's a dressing language. Are you classy, flashy, or trashy? Right. Amen. I want to be classy. I don't want to be trashy. Someone say amen. amen. Whatever clothing you select, the focal point of your appearance should be your face. Yes. Someone say amen. amen. Isn't your face what you want people looking at and not your sexuality on display? Amen. I mean, I want people to look at me. Right. Not at this body God has given me. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Modesty implies that clothing must provide enough covering for our body so that others are not embarrassed or tempted. Amen. I can tell you as pastor, I have been embarrassed Amen. by some things that some people who are part of this church have worn in here. Right. Embarrasses me. You should not be wearing stuff that's going to expose anything. Can you say amen? Amen. Uh, modesty implies that we need to be covered. Jesus clearly condemned the lustful glance. And while we're admonished to flee youthful lust, there is no question but that the revealing clothing worn by men and women today contributes to the depravity of our time or it contributes to the downfall of our society. Amen. Amen. The Scripture always condemned nudity and commended modesty. In the New Testament, it was the demon-possessed man who wore no clothes. Uh, Luke 8 and 27, the Christian woman and man is to wear a modest apparel and propriety with, with propriety and moderation. 1 Timothy 2 and 9. Certainly, the man who has leadership and responsibilities is not free to dress as he pleases. Nudity is a calamity to be avoided. A modesty is a sin which God hates. Amen. The way that people dress today leaves no room for imagination. There was a day and time where if you weren't fit, you, you, would, you would cover yourself up. But now everybody, I'm telling you, whether they're fit or not, they're putting it out there for everybody to see. Amen. You know, the old saying, flaunt it if you got it. No, honey, don't flaunt it. You keep, you keep it to yourself. Amen. I don't care if you're attractive or, or, you know, if you're unattractive. It still doesn't need to be out there because it's going to attract somebody. Right. 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 
Say amen. 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 Uh, uh, we need to be careful. Modern fashion. Immodesty is a sin which God hates. Uh, immodesty. Modern fashions are designed to catch the attention uh, of the male and to concentrate that attraction uh, on the female body. So we've got to be careful. And the same is true with what men wear nowadays. Uh, many garments, uh, uh, they suggest nakedness. There are some clothes and some colors of clothes that are so tight that if someone's far off, you can't tell if they have something on or not. Amen. And it's done like that just to get your mind to go into a place yes. it doesn't need to go. Yes. Someone say, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Amen. So we've got to be careful. Amen. We want to make sure that we're not suggesting anything that God would not want. They convey the impression of full exposure of the body without actually doing so. Thus, are even more provocative than total nakedness. Women who are poured into tight jeans and men now the same way uh, who, who are poured into tight jeans and, and, and women who wear short skirts and revealing blouses and tight sweaters uh, are wearing such garments to schools and to work. You see a lot of times uh, people just wore this kind of, these kind of clothes when they went to the club. Right. Now they wear it to church, they wear it to school, they wear it to work, everywhere they're at. It, you know, uh, there was a day and time people would be embarrassed to be dressed like that. If you dressed like that, you were thought to have been a woman of the evening. Hallelujah. We need to be careful. Amen. Uh, I don't know what people are trying to attract. Maybe they think they're going to attract uh, their future spouse. Uh, uh, perhaps their egos are boosted by noticing the turn and the turning of heads uh, and catcalls. Possibly uh, they choose to show off parts of their body to compete with others. Uh, but most likely it is done merely because that's the way everybody else uh, is dressing these days. The Scripture does promise God's favor upon those who are willing to come out and be separate from those who are walking in the dark, in darkness. We don't need to dress like the world. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. We need to be modest in the way that we're dressed. First of all, clothing is to be modest and everyone say amen. 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 Clothing is to be modest. The Greek word kosmios, translated modest, carries the essential meaning of order, which applied to dress, it has the meaning of being well-ordered, proper, and decent. It derives its meaning from the root word kosmos, cosmos, which often translated is translated as world as in God's creation. God's well-ordered adorning of His creation is a role model for us to follow in outward appearance. Modest apparel for the woman that should reflect it should reflect God's design and order and complement the grace and beauty of womanhood. Amen. There are two other words used in 1 Timothy 2 and 9 which uh, uh, further define proper dress. Uh, the word shamefacedness uh, and sobriety. The word shamefacedness uh, comes from a Greek word which means literally downcast eyes but is meant in a good sense and refers to one who is ashamed to overstep the limit of womanly reserved. The other word sobriety is self-control especially over sexual passions. Uh, women are to exercise self-control so that so that neither their passions or anyone else's are aroused. Amen. And this is good for the women and the young ladies alike. There is a difference between dressing attractively and dressing to attract attention. It's alright to dress attractively. Yes. But we should not be dressing to attract attention. That's right. Modesty That's right. is dressing attractively. Dressing to, to attract attention is a violation of the Bible's expectation on dress. If anyone, a woman or a man, dresses in such a way that others can't help but notice their bodily form, even if done unintentionally, they are likely to arouse carnal desire. Amen. And let me tell you, be careful. Because there is a spirit of homosexuality in this world. And lesbianism. You may think you're just attracting someone of the opposite sex. But I want you to know there are others out there of your same sex that you are attracting.
Hallelujah. Be careful. Be careful. Amen. Paul warned against causing others to stumble because of our freedom in, in Romans 14 and 13. In Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 8 and 9, he says, Beware somehow this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to those who are weak. Amen. So granted, the man is held responsible for his lust, but the woman is not free of guilt or accountability. Both are guilty. Jesus refers to this principle in Matthew 18 and 7. He says, Woe to the world because of offenses. Offenses must come, but woe to that man by whom the offense comes. It is imperative that parents train their children. Amen. Let me say that again. It's a, you know, imperative that, that parents train their children, especially their daughters, in proper conduct and modesty, so as not to cause offense. It'll be the most. It will be most effective to have them wear when they are small what we would like them to wear when they get older. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Amen. Husbands and fathers, uh, you know, we want to train them up. The Scripture says train them up, uh, uh, you know, so that when they're old, they won't depart from it. Uh, uh, husbands and fathers uh, have the greater responsibility in that they know firsthand what causes their eyes to focus wrongly on the body of a woman. Amen. So husbands and fathers, it is your responsibility to watch out for your wife and your children. Amen. And if you're living in a home where there is not, that's why I'm teaching like this and preaching like this. Amen. So that you, as a single mother, can say, hey, our pastor is laying a guideline for this. If you if you don't want to hurt or offend your children or make your children mad at you, you let them know, hey, pastor, preach the word and this is how we're going to live. Amen. 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 Somebody say amen. 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 So, so we need to be careful. Husbands, fathers, look out for those who are close to you. There was a day and a time that I said, and I said earlier, that men were the only ones who were aroused by sensuality. But today, with the crossing of gender lines and with how messed up this world is, women wrestle with the flesh just as much as men wrestle. Amen. Yeah, it's true. Maybe not you, but they do. They're being taught that it's okay to want and desire. It's okay. When it comes to the way we dress, I'm not saying as Christians that we would should wear sloppy, ill-fitting clothes. Modesty does not mean wearing a burlap bag. It's okay to be fashionable. It's okay to be well-dressed. And it's quite possible for, for us to be both modest and good to look at. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Amen. We're God's ambassadors to the world and we should conduct ourselves with dignity. We need to listen and keep in mind that fashion trends and even the weather should not dictate more than the Word of God the styles and manner of dress we choose to put on our bodies. Well, it's hot outside. I can't help it. Well, turn the AC on. Stand in front of a fan. Don't go outside. Amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Not everybody's saying amen. 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 Hallelujah. Good preaching. Hallelujah. Amen. Before you go out the door, you need to look in the mirror and ask yourself if God would go out in public wearing this. Right. Uh huh. Would, 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 would Mary, the mother of Jesus, uh, uh, go out wearing what I'm wearing right now? Would, would Jesus' mom, would Jesus be okay with his mama or his sister wearing something like this? Nope. Think about it. Amen. Before you go out the door, look in the mirror. Amen. Because if what you're wearing, if he wouldn't go out wearing it, or he wouldn't let his mama or sister go out wearing it, then you don't need to wear it either. Amen. Because you're a Christian and he's you. There's one speaker that I read about that refers uh, to something called the no zone. Everybody say the no zone. No zone. All right. This is the area of the body from the upper uh, upper to the lower torso where we shouldn't be touching one another. Amen. I mean, I love y'all. Me, I, I love everybody in here, mm -hmm. but I don't care if you're a man or a woman. Uh, there's some places, you know, from here to here, I don't want you touching. Right. And you should be wanting, if you're not married, you shouldn't be wanting anybody touching you there either. 
And the only person that should ever touch you there is the person that you have committed to in marriage. Amen. Amen. Ladies, do you hear me? So this no zone. So if nobody should be touching us there with their hands, they shouldn't be looking at us there with their eyes. Amen. Can you say amen? And if you wouldn't go up and touch somebody there, don't be touching them there with your eyes. Amen. Because Jesus said, when you've done it with this, you've already done it. And I know folks, so there are people who say, well, I've already done it. I might as well just go ahead and jump in. No, it doesn't work like that. No, it doesn't. I have honestly heard people say that. But I've already committed the sin in my mind, so I might as well go ahead since I've already done it and I'm going to have to repent over it. No, uh, it doesn't work that way. Oh, Somebody Amen. say, help us, Lord. Help us. Your heart's really not right. Amen. So we need to make sure that this no zone, this is a, a no zone. You don't touch with your hands or your eyes. Men and women are visually sensitive. When, we are, uh, when we're dressed immodestly, it entices others to sin. Right. Jesus said if we entertain lustful thoughts then we've committed adultery. So when we uh, are dressed uh, modestly, we're free to enjoy beauty without sexual temptation. Amen. You may have every area of your body covered but if what you're wearing is so tight there's no room for doubt on the contour of your body, then there is a problem. So when in doubt, you need to do the silhouette test. Everybody say the silhouette test. The silhouette test. You need to stand in front of a light and check out your shadow. Can you tell by your shadow if you're dressed or not? Amen. If it's questionable even for an instant, uh, I would recommend that changing. Amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Then there's another test called Praise the Lord test, the PTL test. It's called Praise the Lord test. So if you can lift up your hands, if you can lift your arms up or bend over without exposing any skin, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. From up here to down here or other body parts or undergarments, then you pass the PTL test, Amen. the Praise the Lord test. The world doesn't need to see your skin or your undergarments either. Amen. And while we're there, boys, listen to me. Yes. You don't need to be wearing low-riding britches. Amen. I don't care if you got your shirt tucked, covering your drawers or not. Eventually, they're going to come uncovered and nobody needs to see your backside, your boxers, or your breeches. Immodest if you are showing off your stuff. Amen. Men and women alike. Amen. So be careful. Amen. Modesty is a separation from worldliness and will in fact deter immorality in our lives. True modesty starts below the exterior right here in the heart. It's an issue of purity and thought and manner which manifests itself in the way we dress and conduct ourselves with humility and respect. Romans 14 says, So then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in the way of a brother or sister. Be careful. Don't be a flirt. Listen to me. Don't be a flirt. Don't be a tease. Young and old alike. You don't need to be flirting. You don't need to be a tease. That's not innocent. Thank you, Jesus. And it's not right. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 8 and 9 says, Be careful, however, that the, uh, that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. Uh, James 1 and 27 says, Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, uh, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. We're not wrong for wanting to be desirable, attractive, or even cool, trendy, and fashionable. But we need to pray to grow within us a desire to be attractive through our personality more than our appearance. Amen. I want to be attractive because of my character and my personality. 
not because of this awesome physique that God has blessed me with. Amen. Amen. We need to avoid exposing ourselves in a way that doesn't show respect to God or to others. We need to be honest as we evaluate the motive behind the clothing we choose to wear. And I have a scripture, and I, I'm not sure uh, I had it listed or it was in my study, but this is a way that it says young men needs, need to treat young women. It says you need to treat them as your sister. Those who are pure and clean. The young women who are, are not married yet. When You need to treat them as your sister. Amen. Amen. You see, if you if you live by that, you you're not going to be doing a whole lot of things. Right? You're gonna you're gonna keep it at holding hands. That's right. And if you're not married, that's as far as it needs to go. Amen. A little peck on the cheek is good enough. A little peck on the lip is probably a little too far. You say, "Oh, pastor, that's crazy." Hey, I'm telling you. When you go crossing a line and getting too close, physically speaking, mm -hmm. it's a slippery slope. That's right. That's right. And once you start falling, I want you to know uh, it's like falling down a flagpole that's been greased. You're not going to get back up. Amen. You're going to fall. Amen. You say, well, I'm, I'm dressed clean, I'm modest. I'm, well, you also need to be modest in your thought. Amen. So we need to be careful. And that's why I recommend that young men and young women do not be alone. And old, our adults too. Amen. If you are single, and e single or even if you are married. Right. The only woman you need to, or man you need to be alone with is the one you're married to. Yes. Right. You say, well, my job has put me in a situation where you say, oh, oh wait a minute. You don't, put, you don't go in that situation. Amen. Amen. You don't need to be alone. If you're an adult and you're single, let me tell you, you need to be very, very, very careful. Because it's not okay for you to cross that threshold. Amen. And everyone say amen. 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 Modest is hottest. And everyone say praise the Lord. Praise amen. The Lord. amen. I, I think a, a good, holy, living holy dressed person is so much more attractive. That's right. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, I got enough uh, trials and temptations in my life. I don't need every woman out there dressing like a Jezebel uh, trying to tempt me too. Right? Hallelujah. So keep your eyes up and out of the no zone. Amen. And I know, man, it's not. It, sometimes it's hard to do. You know, you're, I, and, and women, you know, lecture. No, keep them up. Amen. Amen. And, and if, if we would dress appropriate, we wouldn't have to worry about what somebody's looking at. Amen. That's why we do that test. Praise the Lord test. Amen. Amen. I don't have to worry. I'm not showing anything off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to be clean and holy and pure. I don't want to cause someone to stumble or fall. Amen. Let's everybody give the Lord a hand clap. Of hand. True modesty. Amen. True modesty starts here in the heart. Amen. Let's stand to our feet this evening. I hope... That what we have shared with you, there's so much more, hallelujah, that we can cover. We just got a basic on this tonight. I want you to know next week, the fence that we're going to talk about is the fence of purity. And I promise you, it will be PG. It will be so You don't have to worry about that. It's going to be uh, too, too, you know, well, I don't want my kid to hear anything like that. Just like, you know, sometimes even some of the things we talk about tonight, some folks say, well, you know, our kids, you know, they're, maybe they're too young to hear that. If you knew what your kids were hearing at school and what they were watching on TV and, and they, right there in your own house, you don't even know about it. Not all the time. You might when you're away, 
But now with the internet and everything else that we have, uh, uh, 5,061 channels on the TV, you have no idea what they're seeing. Right. Right. And you don't know what they're hearing. They need to hear about modesty and purity right here. Amen. Because they need to know. We need to know. If we are crossing a line, we are sinning not against uh, uh, mama and daddy, not against our family, but we're sinning against God. Right. You see, the world and the school is telling them that it's okay. We're telling them that it's not okay. Amen. 